Hello, everyone, and welcome to our governance call number 16. I am Orhan, your governance facilitator, and the agenda for today, let me just quickly paste it in the chat here. Sorry for the messy message, but that's the agenda for today. So we have a governance update that I will start with very shortly, and then there will be an update from the credit group. And then we have a community proposal for a legal review of the 1754 factory pool. And we have an ongoing discussion about the Tin Lake rewards. And lastly, we have a recent proposal from Stella Swap to list CFG. So that's the agenda for today. And to start with the governance update, there has been a lot of activity in the last month, and I'll post a link to the update on the forum instead of going through all the proposals individually. There are many of them. So this is the link to the forum post with the most recent update. I do, however, want to say that there are two proposals up for vote. That's two runtime upgrades, one on Centrifuge and one on Altair. So they're both ready for an unchained vote. So you can vote with your AIR or CFG tokens in those two proposals. Other than that, we've uh, last in last month's call, we heard that Nova Wallet now supports Centrifuge on-chain governance. So if you are a mobile user and you have Nova Wallet, you can actually participate in on-chain governance using the wallet if you import your account. And uh, we also have OpenSquare, which is the UI we use for our off-chain voting, they now support delegation as well. So if you have tokens delegated, you can now use that to vote on OpenSquare as well. That was not possible before. So it was, this was a recent thing. So this is the brief governance update. So if you want to re hear, uh, read more about the proposals that have passed, you can check the link that I sent earlier in the chat. So let's move on to the first point on the agenda, which is an update from the credit group. So if you are here with us, Mark, please enlighten us. Yeah, hi, Orhan. Uh, hi, everyone who I haven't met yet. Um, uh, thanks for that. <clears throat> I'll give a quick update. Uh, actually, just two. I'm um, thinking one, uh, just year to date recap of some of the stuff we've done. Uh, and then two, how we're putting pen to paper on like the first credit review. Um, as a reminder, I'm taking over for uh, Mike Rusick. I've been with the team for about a month now. Um, so thanks for everyone who's contributed uh, before I got here as well. Um, quick, quick year to date uh, recap. Basically a lot, of, a lot of it was focused on forming the governance structure um, and really the credit group strategy and purpose, uh, which we've kind of have a really solid base off of right now. Uh, that's reflected in the, the the group charter, which is posted on the forum. Uh, we've also been working on some um, review templates to hit on some key criteria that we might want to touch on uh, for when reviewing new pool proposals. Um, obviously, work in progress. I'm sure we'll iterate it on it depending on the needs of the of the DAO. Um, aside from that, also doing a little bit of tinkering uh, to the previously proposed budget now that we have a better sense of direction, strategy, deal flow, et cetera. So more to come on this. This will be a segmented breakdown of what and how uh, different reviewers or credit group members uh, will get paid. Um, so more to come on that. That'll be via a, a forum post. So welcome any feedback feedback there as well. Um, yeah, so right now I'd say we've got a solid base in terms of credit group members of about eight people. Um, we are looking to actively expand that. I'd, I'd love to double it um, in the next quarter. And as a reminder, the work that credit group members do and the compensation for that work is on a per deal per report basis. So it's not really a ton of downside to looking to, to add in new members. Um, from a cost perspective, and I think there's a lot of clear benefits in terms of increasing the size and, and diversity of the group. So we'll be um, in connection with the forum post for a revised budget. We'll also be 
inviting really anyone uh, to share their background, expertise, and interest, uh, and expand um, and expand the group. So. You'll welcome any of your colleagues who might um, have an experience in, in credit um, to follow up on that post, but we are looking to expand. So that's um, brief, I guess, stuff we've worked on year to date, um, things that I've taken over for Mike as well. Um, happy to field questions on that, on that towards the end, um, but expect to see more detail on the forum uh, this week. In terms of um, second update I have really is, is, is putting pen to paper on the first credit review. So great, uh, we have a strategy. Um, now let's start um, producing some output on that uh, now that we have a pretty solid direction and base. What we're gonna be focusing on first um, is uh, working uh, to do a review with the, the de facto team, who's been a longstanding partner um, that I understand on the Centrifuge platform. They've been working on, um, They've, they've actually been involved in the console freight and trade bridge um, pools that you're seeing on, on Tin Lake. And so we'll be looking to do um, a review there as kind of proof of concept. I would say directionally, maybe that's three to 10 pages in length, probably takes you know five to 15 hours to, to complete um, in time. And so right now we're in the process of digging through their data room, signing NDAs, um, so that we can develop questions, do our due diligence, and ultimately produce a report. Um, so looking forward to that one as, as sort of a proof of concepts. Um, and also just evaluating new pools. I think capital markets activity has, has generally been pretty muted over the past few months and, and might remain that way. But as new pools um, come in, we'll be pre-screening those. And I'm, I'm not going to assign... Um, someone to do work on it unless I, I think it has legs and will add value to the platform. So um, yeah, welcome, welcome feedback on the first review. Ultimately, like want to iterate uh, the structure and the content. If it's too long, we'll make it shorter. If it's too short, we'll make it longer. Um, but really what is I really just producing something that's that's helpful to the rest of the, the DAO uh, and the rest of the community. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it in terms of updates from from me. Happy to Happy to field any questions now or, or later. Thank you very much, Mark. Are there any questions to uh, Mark? I, I think I see one. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, I'm Chris. Uh, been uh, kind of following Centrifuge for a couple months now. Uh, super excited what you guys are doing. Thinking about possibly doing a pool. Um, I have a question. So it seems like the pool process is like the credit uh, group reviews it and then there's like some kind of like seven point criteria or whatever or, or maybe it's 10 and then you need to get a seven out of 10 um, and then and then it goes to like a vote by the DAO so is that what this report that you're preparing now for these couple uh, pools is that for that vote or is it for investors thinking about investing yeah yeah, so so it's 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 going to be for investors thinking about investing. So I would say think of us, Chris, as independent consultants, um, and the reports that we're producing would be very akin to like sort of credit rating agency reports, not offering investment advice. So very much so, kind of independent consultant advisory um, for people to make their own informed decisions about uh, different pools. So it's really meant to be. Summary of strengths and concerns of a credit, just objectively. Um, maybe some pre maybe some color on like comps and pricing. Like, okay, this is a ten percent rate, but you know, is that a fair rate? Um, and then maybe some commentary on on the legal structure as well. But um, that's how I think about it. Hopefully, that answers um, the question. But it will be it will be a little bit distinct from the the voting process that was done um, uh, historically that you that you've seen. Oh, okay. So the voting process is no longer part of like the pool onboarding process. Um, I am. I'll have to get back to you on that. It hasn't been, hasn't been kind of in our in our in my purview. Um, um no, maybe could Orhan or Christian, who've been um, working with the pop as it's evolved, do you feel you could give an update on how? The difference between the old and the new for Chris and, and what at what level the voting comes in? 
Well, yeah, I can give a very quickly. Firstly, I posted the link to the proposal on GitHub, so you can check that for all the details. But you mentioned um, to begin with like those 10 points. Yes, there were 10 criteria. And in order for a pop um, to not pass, because it wasn't a requirement to pass, but it needed seven out of the 10 yes in order for it to proceed in the process. Or uh, so. But that has been, that's not relevant anymore. There's another template now or other things that are required. But towards the end of the process, there is an off-chain vote for whether right. a tool should be onboarded or not. So there will be an off-chain vote. That's it. But if you want to see the whole process, I don't want to go through the whole process because you can basically read it in that link that I sent you there. And I don't remember all the details, to be honest. So... If you want to check it out, read it there. And if you have any questions to that, feel free to come back and, uh, and ask us. We'll gladly clarify it. Does okay. work for you? Yeah, it works. I, I think I saw this. Uh, so the criteria is now gone. There's no 10, 10 point review thing. It's just it, every, so every pool goes to, to vote then. Basically, there's no like hurdles along the way. Uh, so, no, I mean, the, it would need an assessment from the credit group first. That would be the stage two of the process. The first step of stage would be to submit the proposal on the, the pop on the forum. And right. then a moderator will check that all information is there and nothing is missed. And then the credit group can decide to give an, um, an assessment of this pool. And then based on that, it can move on to a pool party where the issuer sure. can present themselves. And after that, there will be an on-chain vote. That would be the third step, stage three, it's called. Okay, that's great. And is this process like currently in effect? I haven't seen any tools kind of go through. It the is in effect, recently. but there is no pop that has actually been through the whole process yet. But yes, it, it's, it's the one that is in effect right now. All right, yeah. very cool. And Chris, even even pre PLP, I appreciate that there's um, you know work that you have to do to. Um, to like fill in a lot of information for the PLP. So if you want to just like huddle on a call and talk high level before investing the time in that PLP, um, happy to do that on the side as well and just just do a call before even doing the rest of the process um, just at a high level. That sounds great. Yeah, I'd love to uh, be, if you're in New York also, I'd love to, or in the Northeast area, I'd love to, to catch up for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both. Are there any more uh, any more questions to the credit group or Mark before we move on? All right then. I Let's. Um, I'd love to just get a sense of. I know that it's a moving target, but like, how is the? Can you give us a rough sense of how the credit group gets compensated, or just give us kind of a range so we can understand how much. How much you guys are getting paid yeah so it's on a per deal basis uh complexity of the like it, it depends on the complexity of the deal um but say takes uh say it takes again just rough numbers here say it takes on average 10 hours of review time obviously can ebb and flow 10 hours 200 bucks an hour probably somewhere around two thousand dollars per review um but i put a delta on that of of as low as a thousand up to 3000, but I'd say like generally on a port, per report per, per review basis, we'd be looking at around uh, 2K. Let's assume we do, you know, one to three reviews a quarter. Um, that's kind of roughly the the numbers that you're looking at, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's a moving target um, subject to change, but those are kind of some ballpark numbers and, and how we're thinking about it right now. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? All right. Then we can move on to the next topic, which is also related to pool or a specific pool. And uh, Christian, if you are here with us, you are the person who made the proposal on the forum. Would you like to talk the community through that one? um yes or on which proposal not you uh christian uh, so, okay <laughs> I, I was quite uh okay thank you well feel free to do it but um uh, was christian I, 
I was surprised and I thought, what, what the heck did I do? I don't know. I don't know what you did. But uh, I know Christian Peterson had a proposal, but I'm actually not sure if he is in the call. He might be tuning in later. All right. Well, then we can, uh, maybe he will come later so we can move on to the next point on the agenda. That was the legal review of the 1754 factory pool on, on uh, Tim Lake. But if he's not here, we cannot hear about it. Yeah, we're on happy to jump in at the end to give a quick review if he doesn't hop on. I can give some uh, broad broad context on, on his proposal. Um, but um, yeah, yeah I, guess we can wait till, wait, I guess we can wait till the end, that's fine. All right, that's fine. Thanks for that, uh, Mark. Well, in that case, we can um, move on to the next topic, which is uh, will be the proposal from Stella Swap to list CFG. So there should be a representative from uh, Stella Swap here. Was that that's you, Aziz? Welcome, Aziz. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks. Thanks for inviting us here. Uh, my name is Aziz. I'm one of the co-founders of Stella Swap. And yes, we put out um, uh, sort of like a, a proposal to list CFG. So basically just a, a bit of ourselves as in really leading decks on, on Moonbeam. And what we want to be is basically the shelling point of Polkadot, right? A trade, va a trade value for Polkadot with uh, the underlying mechanics of XCM allowing assets from other projects to be listed here. So right now we're <clears throat> beyond being the leading decks on 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 Moonbeam. We're actually the top decks uh, across Polkadot with the uh, in terms of PBL and in terms of trade volume. So our trade volume is basically five to ten x more than our next competitor, right? So, um, so yeah, uh, what that's what, and we're actually in the midst of an ecosystem grants uh, as well. So that's why, as in, there's a lot of activity. On Moonbeam and we're spearheading the, the growth. So uh two things, right? In in an approach of, of uh passing through the proposal to CFG because CFG is one of the uh, biggest sort of like community around and we really align with your value proposition. In fact, just just a disclaimer, uh before this our team was from um was from a centralized exchange right and we focus on uh, asset tokenization, right? Um, we were one of the first uh, entities in the Middle East that was that had the license to sort of like um, sandbox license to um, facilitate uh, create an uh, asset tokenization engine, and we we basically worked with the CBB Central Bank of Bahrain to come up with a pilot. So we're very familiar with asset tokenization, and we really sort of like aligned to that value proposition. Coming back into uh, the the purpose of the proposal again starting point of uh, Polkadot and we want to uh, create a, a really diverse and robust market that allows people to just access a lot of uh, cross parachain assets in an EVM setting, right, which is the most popular way, which is the most uh, popular user journey right now. Um, and yeah, we've listed a file, uh, you know, uh, 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 Akela assets as well as uh, pending. There's going to be a few more parachains in the pipeline. Hey, uh, sorry. Is it my connection? I think How there's about something with the connection. Yeah, you we missed like a fifteen seconds of your speech, like fragments of it. But uh... oh, sorry about that. It's all right. I that. just wanted to let you know. Okay, thanks. Uh, if it happens again, let me know. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, we want to we want to sort of like uh. Uh, be the shelling point where we list cross parachain assets on Polkadot. And we've already listed uh, uh, a few, uh, I mean, the top parachain assets, Easter, Akela, uh, Fala. We're also going to list a few more uh, parachain assets within the next two weeks. So there's, there's a good pipeline of uh, assets right now. Um, and also based on that, I, I think what's really Breaking important is that, uh, oh man, hold on. Let me let me try to let, let let me try to turn on my video so that you know maybe the bandwidth is better. That's fine. That's all right. Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. So yeah. Uh yeah. So we've listed uh, again. Uh, we've listed uh, uh as in the major production assets, and we're continuing to expand the pipeline to include other assets. But beyond that, I think beyond the trading venue, uh, one thing which we're very proud of is basically uh sort of like fostering cross chain, not only cross I mean cross chain applications across uh Polkadot via parachains, but also L1, L2 external network cross chain, and with when we launch, or uh, you know, with Squid and Exla, the cross chain swaps back on February. Uh, till now, we basically one of the as in Moonbeam is basically the the most popular as in capital inflow for cross chain swaps across that beats Ethereum, AVAX, you know, and under analytics, uh, under sort of like. Uh, uh squids uh sort of like uh as in uh analytics right so that is something we're proud of because what that is a powerful thing that facilitates capital inflows towards polka dot and therefore for example you can imagine if someone wants to buy a centrifuge tokens right uh all they have to do is basically uh get usdc from ethereum use a cross chain swap and then get cfg on moonbeam network so without any bridging, without any use of XCM, you know, it's just going to be just like a swap transaction within a one to five minutes. So that is something that we're also con continue expanding. And lastly, uh, why why Pulsar? Why our V3? Um, that allows us to uh, sort of like extend our cross-chain asset list, right? Because previously on, on a normal standard V2 AMM, you know, uh, there there was limitation in 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 extending our our sort of like a pairing list because, um, you know, it is inefficient, right? So you have to have a lot of uh, as in admissions and rewards to sustain a, a particular TBL. But right now with Pulsar, it's extremely efficient, right? Uh, five to ten x more efficient with with utilization rates of four x or five x, right? Or even hundred percent utilization rates where previously utilization rates on standard AMM was at 5% on average, right? So that allows us to list a lot of assets in a cost-efficient manner. So this means that on your end, for the centrifuge community, you guys don't really need to spend a lot of uh, emissions or rewards or CFG to prop up a certain TVL of the, of the, of the pool because it will be sustainable based on trade fee APR, which will in the long term be part the major major part of the APR structure. So yeah, uh, in the proposal we laid down these two premise, um, and also the breakdown of the emissions, the APRs, uh, based on a daily basis, all the way up to a cumulative duration of eight weeks. So yeah, that's a snapshot. Uh, let me know if there's any questions that we love to answer. I have uh, one question that's based on the proposal, the request for comments on the forum. The way I interpret it is that you're only asking only you're asking for the liquidity incentives only, right? Yes, only liquidity incentives. All right. So everyone will be able to provide the liquidity to this uh, this particular pool. Exactly. Yes. All right. It's also one question from my side. Um, I just saw the um, um, the TVL of roughly five to six million on Stellar Swap. How how do you want to um, um, to um, to increase um, um, uh, this? Even though in the the bad market conditions you had over one fifty million in the good times, but um, is there any clear idea um, how to um, move over to other protocols uh, which might have more liquidity than? Uh, uh, Polkadot. Okay, that's a good this question. This. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let let me uh let me touch on the high level points and then you can go direct to the uh to the sort of like uh mechanics and technicalities, right? So sure. for vision, uh, in terms of our vision, right, we want to be anchored on Polkadot and be the selling point because we know the tech is superior and we we want to sort of like build right now a very good infrastructure to facilitate further sort of like a, a traction and eyeballs down down the medium or, or long term. So we're fully focused towards Polkadot and 
uh, we're now sort of like working with um, all major stakeholders to ensure that you know we we set a good base and most importantly a sustainable base for DeFi. You know, not only based on previously just shoving rewards and APRs, uh, and then you know then it sort of like in the medium to long term it just it's non sustainable. And secondly, I think it's very important to uh, you brought up a good point. TVL right now the transition to V3 wins i mean we are winning away from the importance of tvl as a, as, as a leading metric because okay previously 50 million tvl gives us the most important thing for traders right uh, to us to be a robust trading venue would be uh, market depth or slippage or price impact so a 50 million tvl would give us a slippage of a certain percentage i'll uh, say a capital base of 100000 a trade uh, a trade of a hundred thousand bucks, right? Gives us a certain price impact. Now, what's very cool is that weaning away from this means that we can achieve the same degree of market depth by a fraction of the TVL. Like say 5 million of the TVL with V3 can achieve the market depth of 50 million in TVL, right? So even though right now our cumulative TVL is uh, north of uh, 10, 11 million dollars right now, cumulatively, right? So it is much more deeper than previously because right now we, as in V3 is the most efficient AMM to date. Uh, passing off to Mohammed for uh, uh, for more clarity on the technicals. Hey guys, yeah. um, a mix of from product and analytics. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, as he touched on the main points regarding market depth, what I would say is that the ecosystem uh, grant. Uh, from from Moonbeam just went live about uh, less than two weeks ago, and uh, with that we're launching new ecosystem farms, and and so the the TVL is is about to increase uh, by a lot in the coming couple of months. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good luck. But again, um, how, how do you want to move over to um, by a moving moving um, um, to, to other uh, protocols to to um, eat up uh, their volumes, their their potential, their liquidity? Because at the end of the day, you might have uh, the best technology, i.e., Polkadot, but that doesn't help um, to get liquidity. Uh, are you saying how we're gonna attract TVL from from other chains? Is that what you're asking? Uh, from the moon or from other um, layer ones? I, I don't mind, you know, uh, from other from other um, um, uh, applications. But um, how to attract uh, clients? That's the most important thing. Also for centrifuge to get the liquidity. Right. So, so a couple of things. Uh, first is that at the moment, and um, because of uh, the V3 model of concentrated liquidity, and because of the um, Moonbeam grant system, we're able to offer uh, an extremely high APR compared to to other L1s, and that's that's always a, a big metric for attracting capital, for attracting users from other chains. Second thing is that uh, with the cross chain uh, capabilities that 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 we have in store now, uh, it makes it a lot easier for anyone without even moving their TVL. Uh, like without without even trying to to attract TBL from other chains, allows them to to uh, swap to to get Polkadot assets even from uh -huh. other other L ones, which is which is a, a huge feature that that we were working on for for, for a while in partnership with with uh, Squid, and and now that we have it live, it's 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 a great feature to be able to quickly swap and and get uh, Polkadot assets directly from any any L1. Oh, cool! Sounds sounds cool. Competition is fierce, and I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you for um, talking us through your proposal from Stellaslav Assis and. Uh, I don't remember what your name was. Was it uh, Mix Mixo? So, just to clarify, there are no uh, funds in the treasury right now to be able to um, to to get this uh, these uh, incentive rewards. So, but we do have a proposal um, CP6 for block rewards that should be implemented within the next couple of weeks. 
So hopefully by then there will be some funds in the treasury, but there's nothing yeah, wrong with starting the proposal now already. So you did the right thing starting on the forum, so we can continue it there. So thank you both of you for uh, coming here, or all of you, I guess there are more than two of you here. So thanks for coming, appreciate that. So let's move on in on the agenda. And uh, the next point on the agenda is something that we actually started in the last governance call, but there wasn't enough time for it. So we moved it on to the forum and continued there. And what I'm talking about is the discussion about removing the Tin Lake rewards. And let's hear it from the person who initiated that discussion. So Colin, are you here with us? You know it. Lovely. Thank you. The stage is yours, sir. OK. Um, hi from New York City. So um, here, here was my original thinking, is that when I saw the Tin Lake rewards going through and the discussion happening, my general sense of things and my general feeling is that we were continuing we were continuing to extend Tim Lake rewards based on precedent, but not based on data. Um, and we were doing it based on assumptions and doing it based on a bit of tradition. So the way I think about it is that in the past year, the majority of pools on centrifuge have remained quite stagnant. And I'm sure that's been very difficult, difficult for those pools and those issuers, given what's happened from a headline perspective, what's happened with um, interest rates around the world um, and what's been happening from a regulatory perspective, especially in the U.S. It's just made everything very hard on everyone. Um, but the truth is, is that, you know, in, the, in light of all that, is that I don't think we've seen much of an uptick or much of a change in TVL outside of the work that Block Tower has done um, and the work that Block Tower did with MakerDAO specifically. And so... What I'm calling for here, I guess, as we look to the future, um, is I think everything else with Tim Lake rewards on the current proposal will go forward and has been voted on chain and all that good stuff, is kind of going forward is how can we as a community take a look at the data and be a bit more critical going forward of how these rewards are allocated, whether that be to the junior tranche or how that be to the senior tranche. And I don't think it's a community-wide task necessarily. There's probably a group of community members that could come together to start to think about this. But I think getting under the hood of Tim Lake a bit, getting into the data a bit and starting to look at whether or not these rewards, if how they've been intended to be used are actually um, getting us to the outcomes that we seek as a community. I'd like to just call for a little more prudence looking forward and using data on how we decide to make rewards looking into the future. So that's my soapbox. I'll get off it. Very curious to hear how others are thinking and feeling about this uh, in light of those comments and some of the others that made on the phone. Thank you, Colin. Let's hear from the people. What are your thoughts on this, what Colin is uh, talking about? I like it. Basically, uh, we have to save um, CFG centrifuge um, uh, for the stakers in the future, hopefully. And um, the the investors they get their their returns, their their interest rates. So full stop. It's a clear picture, and uh, that's fine. If this makes sense, what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, you just mentioned staking. It does just confuse me for a second. Uh, but otherwise, yes. Well, we don't stake at the moment. We don't have uh, for for our holders like myself. We we don't have any chance um, for um, make make uh, the um, CFG working, you know, and uh, earning uh, returns. Uh, so basically, that's my, my only issue with uh, Centrifuge, apart from having a, an amazing um, concept in place. Right. I can see Kirill turned on his video. Are you ready to say something? I guess so. Yeah. I just want to say. You know, I'm here advocating for the existing AOs um, and, and ourselves as one of them, obviously. <clears throat> um, when I got elected to the council, I, I promised I'd do that for everyone. And I think, you know, obviously it's um, 
you know, for asset originators today and tomorrow, I think it's very important to have some level of rewards, uh, whether, again, I, I'm all for using data, but I don't think, you know, I don't think we've shown one way or the other, wh whether it's working or not working at this point. So I'm all for using data, but I think, you know, just like a note for as, a, as, a, as an AO, um, there are significant time and costs, like hard costs, as in gas, that AOs, all of us, expand. For example, just as a, you know, a, a recent example of today, we did, I think, six um, repayments on chain of six different loans. And I, I, you know, the total cost in dollar terms was around $1,000 for the six repayments, right? So that's a significant chunk for someone like us and others, again, that are doing you know, um, significant on-chain transactions. Th those are uh, not cheap. Uh, they obviously fluctuate. So the rewards are helpful, at least in that regard, for the AOs. Um, I believe they're also helpful for the investors. I've been paying attention, you know, before, not so much recently, but, you know, I think eliminating rewards, the thought was, you know, the less supply there is, the higher the price should go. I mean, but that really didn't hold to be true and in the last, you know, the last times I've checked, at least I could be wrong. I haven't done this in a while, but that is my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Kirill. Ivan, you have your hand up. Go ahead, sir. I see Chris is first. Thank you, Hugh. I think that hand has been up since the beginning, right, Chris? Oh. Just have to take it uh, down, or or has it been up? No, no, I just raised it. Um... Oh, sorry. Okay, then yes, then you're first. Yeah, go ahead. My apologies. That's okay. I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but uh, um, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I, just, I was just curious if, uh, be, like, just for people like me who are relatively new, I'd love to hear a little bit of a history uh, of like Tin Lake rewards, why they were introduced. Um, I kind of, I think I understand the reason why they may no longer be necessary, but I'd love to love to understand that. That's a great question. Is there someone who can who has been here? I'm sorry. First of all, I don't have any hand to raise to to be uh, be, be uh, very nice and um, um, follow the order. Um, for this reason, I have just to to talk without um, finding the 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 link for the hand. Maybe I give my 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 um, um, answer to this. Um, it's just subsidizing, yeah, incentivizing people to come over and 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 to join the platform. Full stop. In my point of view, but. On the other side, uh, for the uh, AOs, um, 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 tell me one place, maybe there are two or three other places uh, where you get uh, subsidies um, as such, you know. Uh, the market is fierce and also we have to save money. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Guido. I believe the question from you, Chris, was like why they were introduced to begin with these uh, rewards on Tin Lake, right? Yeah, uh, I think it makes sense, like right? It it sounds like it was an incentive to that at, at first there were rewards for originators and investors um and uh, though the originator rewards went away and it sounds like now they're they're just investor rewards which it seems like just boost the return that you get on your investment like if in dollar terms if i'm not mistaken it's basically like paying an additional three and a half percent uh on top of the interest uh, that the uh the issuers are paying Right, yeah, it's an extra reward that they are getting the investors in the pool. And yeah, the asset originator rewards were uh, removed uh, a while ago. I don't know exactly when. Maybe you remember, Ivan, when they were completely removed. Yeah, I think I can make a um, short overview of Thin Lake, if you permit me to share my yeah, screen. Yeah, sure. Please do. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the history of the Tin Lake rewards dropped in and asset originators from the starting of the protocol. We started from 40 to CFG at the beginning, and now with the last proposal that already passed, drop rewards. This is around. This is exactly three CFG for 10k. 18 was lowered for 25 percent, up to 2.25 CFG. So we are definitely decreasing rewards in history. The parameter of the last proposal, so this is the parameter. And this is a comparison of the Tin Lake rewards overview 
before the CP40 and now. So we definitely decrease it. The daily rewards and with actual daily rewards, the annual issues is around 1.64% a year. I think so we should did decrease it a little bit more, but we are going really well. And you can find in Twitter, you can find a lot of tweets about the Tin Lake uh, drop the price of CLG, but technically this is not true because if you will check the Tin Lake uh, wallet balance, it is quite stable. And in the last 90 days, only 700 K CLG have been claimed, and this is around 2,040 USD a day. So you cannot dump with this amount of tokens the price. This is SEC uh, and DEX trading quorum. So uh, another point that you cannot dump the price with Steam Lake rewards. And this is a review of our competitors, Metal, Goldfinch, and Centrifuge, how the price of token drop it. And this is the RPA team and drop senior and junior trash. I think that we are doing very well with team. Uh, IPA, but the drop IPA is quite low in comparison with other average uh, junior IPA is around 6% without CFG rewards. And this is what other protocols offer. Goldfinch offer 7.70% a year plus 6.6% with Goldfinch tokens and Maple offer 10% in stable. So, amazing work, Ivan. Yes, thank you so much, Ivan. This was really helpful. So, one of the important things that Ivan mentioned in this uh, presentation was the passing of CP40, which was to mint additional rewards for the next two months and lower the rate, the CFG rewards rate for 10. So, and the plan has always been to, uh, to continuously adjust these rewards as the, so we, uh, to adapt to the TVL and market conditions. So it was never meant to be like a static thing, but something that we discuss on an ongoing basis. Um, it looks like you're still sharing your screen here, Ivan, aren't you? Or is that just me? Yeah. So Thank you. <laughs> yes. No worries. It was good to have uh, the info there. So does that clear some things up for you, Chris? Uh, it does. I guess I have a follow-on question, which is like, have we been discussing what the rewards will look like when we move to uh, Centerfuge? That we haven't. No, there hasn't been uh, any discussion about that. So, and to be honest, I don't know anything about it. If there are anyone who knows anything, please speak up. But uh, I don't think it's something that that has been discussed. Not that I'm aware of. Cool. Thanks for so, bearing with me and all my questions. <laughs> no, please let the keep them coming. Please do. They're all good questions. So, um, so yeah, I this, think uh, had, had his hand up. Um, oh, around. sorry, I didn't see it. It was a uh, camouflage. I was looking for yellow hands. This was uh, another one. So sorry about that. Go ahead. Asa. Wow, wow, Orhan. wow. I'll just uh, leave that one alone. But um, <laughs> I, I was. I think I don't want to. I know we're short on time. or running up to the end of this, so I don't want to belabor the discussion too much. But I was just kind of sitting between. I think where Colin sits and where Kirill sits, and representing like a little bit more on the. The middle ground here where i think i do think it comes at a cost i don't think you can say in, in you know issuing tokens endlessly will ever be uh free right and even though the price isn't realizing the price today maybe realizing the future it's a lot of things that affect the token price i don't really think token price even matters here i think it's more just conceptually more important to talk about and then i think the question is how much is that cost weighed some colin would articulate probably it's a little more uh 
the cost is a little more significant than it needs to be. But I actually think that the data that Ivan just shared is really great that we've been lowering rewards since uh, time has gone on. It's fairly low. You know, probably is a great number to calibrate how low it should be considering market conditions. But I honestly don't know how much it hurts to keep rewards where they are today. And I think it's really important that we do work on other things like increasing value of utility of the token, which we've got a lot of ideas about as well. Um, and then other, in other ways, though, too, I do think maybe it's even more important to discuss incentivizing drop holders, right? Uh, we looked at the graph and we're incentivizing drop holders a lot more than tin holders. But I think in the current market conditions, especially compared to the rates offered to other protocols, um, you know, drop is the, the, the kind of the main liquidity driver and main volume of, of Tin Lake platform or centrifuge. And then, uh, and, and we, I think you need to juice that the most you can given the current environment where people aren't lending. Um, and it also makes you wonder right, when conditions are favorable again, are we going to increase rewards or rewards supposed to trend off forever? Are we going to stay in this way? I think these are all good questions. I don't necessarily think we should kill it because I don't think the cost is being too, too high today. But uh, I think just the middle ground between Kirill and Colin, I thought it would be worth sharing. Thanks for that, Asad. Ivan, you always, uh, also have your hand up. Go ahead. And yeah, my main question, if we remove the rewards, how we still remain competitive in comparison with other protocol? I'm talking about the drop uh, and not team because the team we are doing very well. So this is a question for Colin. Colin, a question for you. What are we? Oh, you heard him. There you go. Sorry, Ivan. I was arguing with. Saad and Kate about God knows what in the chat. What was the question? My question is, if we remove the rewards, are we still remain competitive? Because our mission is bringing liquidity on chain and retail investor drop, this is also the part of the liquidity. I mean, I, I would just turn that around. Like, is money gonna flow out the door if we kill the rewards? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm just to be clear, I'm very sympathetic to Kirill's argument, right? If Kirill's saying, hey, there's gas fees, there's real costs, and undoubtedly there's real risks in you know, securitizing debt and you know, making these offerings through a DeFi protocol. Uh, I get that. And I, I want to account for that. But I want to account for that at a numbers by numbers basis. And I just don't think that unless someone can point to data, and I guess, I guess. I guess I'm going to have to do all this if I really want to change it, which I'll just have to estimate if it's really worth my time. Is like, if you if you can show me with data that like we're going to get a lot more money or like like tens of millions of dollars are going to flow out of the protocol, I'm all ears for it. But my hunch is that we're not going to like a lot of capital will not flow out of the protocol, and a lot more capital will not flow in if we keep rewards as they are. So then we're simply minting rewards to incentivize behavior, but that behavior is not actually occurring, either to the positive or the negative. And so what I'm saying here is I'm not saying we should kill the rewards, like just to kill them. I'm saying we should look at data to see if it's, to Chris's point, like what was the original intention of keeping these rewards? And I don't think anyone on this call has a real view, including myself, has a real view as to whether or not we will lose TVL or gain TVL if we continue to keep rewards so they are to the degree that it's detrimental to the protocol. And so that's the, the argument I'm making. And what I would say is that if we have 1.9 million CFG, we could do a lot of other things with 1.9 million CFG if it's not actually incenting the behavior that we want to, to incent. Too long, don't read. I think we're all flying blind and we're keeping things going based on precedent and based on assumptions, not based on data or thinking strategically about what we want to do with rewards. Thank you, Colin. Anyone else want to contribute to this discussion? Any be interesting to hear from an investor um, who does value the rewards or experiences them as a value proposition to invest in this and tin like as opposed to other opportunities maybe if we don't have someone that's willing to speak now on this call perhaps that could be part of the research um i think that would be valuable to hear
Yeah, exactly. That was also what I was thinking, whether the CFG rewards actually is something that new investors look at when they want to invest in a protocol. So whether they have to make the decision between different protocols, whether that is something that is relevant to them or it's completely other things they look at, like the APY or the type of pools or whatever else. So we don't have that data, as Colin says, so it's hard to make an assumption or make a conclusion on this. So it would actually be great if there are some investors on in the in the call here today, whether they could share what whether that was a reason for them to invest in the pools like these CFG rewards. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, not everyone can always join the governance call. That's okay. Joining as much as possible is is always appreciated. But I think that we can't discount like viewpoints because people aren't on the call. So yeah, it won't take much for us to to ask around and get some more data on this part of the equation. So perhaps that's an, a little project for a few of us. Yeah, but like based on the previous like on-chain votes, I mean, most people have voted yes for all the minting proposals. So the way I see it based on that is the sentiment is not to remove them, but people are voting yes. But then the question is, why are they voting yes on it? Whether they're just doing it because they've been doing it all the time or, or why? So good points from both sides of these proposals. Anything else, Guido, you, had, uh, you have a question too? No, not a question, but just to confirm that I'm totally agree with what has been said beforehand. And um, I remember one chart um, of uh, competitors uh, where our fees have been very low already, you know, this also has to be considered on the other side. You know what I mean? We are the cheapest um, platform in the, in the, in the Web3 um, world um uh, with um, um low fees um in comparison to the competitors you know that's that's also something somehow we have to earn money and if you get even lower uh, hopefully not uh, maybe you should get more more expensive yeah there's actually a proposal for implementing protocol fees that has passed so that is something that will uh, will be implemented on the pools and centrifuge chain so i don't know if you were aware of that so that's also in the works. All right, anything else? I believe. 7054. Yes, there was a proposal. So Mark, you said you would. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, can, I can fill in here um, and, and, and solicit some feedback. Um, we'll, we'll try to be brief, but basically so, um, there's a proposal to do a a legal analysis on a pool that is um, under a material amount, I guess, a relatively material amount of stress uh, right now in terms of repayments. This is the 1754 factory pool. Um, you can see a robust discussion online. I think um, Christian's proposal is um, and background is pretty well outlined in that forum post, so I won't reread it, but basically um want to want to solicit feedback from other people on on the value add of of having this legal analysis and i'll give my my two cents on it but um basically they want to do a a a full um comprehensive review of um the defaults that has happened in the in the 1754 uh pool looking at underlying uh asset performance looking at um any sort of covenant compliance or general compliance um, in other terms uh, of the agreement, uh, they're proposing, and I think the, the the deliverable at the end of this will be a report summarizing uh, some of those findings. The uh, proposal uh, was twenty five thousand dollars in in DAI or USDC uh, for the scope of the work. Um, so I I think I, I I think to me like this is <clears throat> I'm generally supportive. Of, of having a legal analysis on 
on this poll for, for a couple reasons. I think, um, I think one, like having a, 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 a independent um, legal breakdown is uh, something that has gone awry in DeFi is, is definitely unique in the ecosystem. And I think if it does nothing else, it signals to the rest of the DeFi community that, um, you know, we're trying to have institutional quality uh, assets on the platform um, and reviews on that. So I think it, one, if anything, it just, it's good at signaling like the institutional quality of, of, of the platform. Um, I think too, like maybe, like maybe it helps accelerate the recovery uh, for some of these uh, senior tranche lenders, which if it does, that would be an absolute win in and of itself. No brainer uh, for $25,000, but whether it does or not, that is TBD. Um, so there's some uncertainty there. Um, so that's why I'm generally supportive of it. Um, I guess on the, I guess kind of on the negatives that I would point out, um, you know, this is a four and a half million dollar senior tranche pool. Um, uh, so it's really kind of up to the, the senior tranche holders of that pool and it doesn't necessarily affect all the other pools. So I would caveat that with, um, with some of the cost considerations we have here. So I think it benefits the DAO overall, uh, via signaling, but I do think it has some kind of specific benefits for the, the senior tranche holders here that I just want to solicit feedback, um, from folks on, um, but I think that, yeah, I think the post does a good job summarizing this, but those are my uh, two cents on on doing this kind of work. Thank you, Mark. I saw your question in the chat, uh, Jay. Did you get an answer to it? Was this an answer? Yeah, I, I think so. But I, I really would like to know, like, the end goal that um, either Mark or the proposer thinks that would actually come out of this, right? Like I could see a lot of value to performing a review, but at the end of the day, are the investors interested in this? Um, and is that something that the community should pay for? That, that's what I just don't know. Yeah. Hey, I, hi. Sorry, go ahead, Fabian. Go ahead, Fabian. Hi, um, I think I'm the also part of the equation and um, I'm sorry. Uh, didn't put my makeup on this morning, but I, I think it's a it's a overall great proposal. Um, I think we definitely need to have a framework, uh, you know, and be able to have some clause uh, secure interest on the contract um, that's been signed to ensure like everything is clear and also some type of audits. Um, I'm also willing to work with them on building a framework that will be applicable to every pool, uh, as I think I'm the first one to. Um, you know, undergo from uh, some stress on one of the pool. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we don't see any issue on the branch side, but definitely some issue on the bling side. Uh, as people know, we uh, are in litigation to recover uh, some, some amount. And um, no, I, I think overall, it's a good idea for, for DeFi um, and, and for centrifuge platform. Uh, just the question is like uh, the framework and or um, or to do this uh, properly. Um, for Blink specifically, I know we've been in contact with our option with our uh, 20 investors, I think 21, if I'm precise. Um, and we send them an update and we uh, offer more guarantee and, and try to wind down that. Um, so I'm not sure it's applicable to to, to Blink if, it, if it's recovered and, and closed in a few weeks, but um, I'm, I'm willing to spend some time and provide some feedback to uh, to this group and create a group to to do so. Um, just just a early feedback. Um, I didn't expect to talk about that today, but um. thank yeah. you, Fabian. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Fabian. Um, I think no, I think it's a I think it's a valid point, Jay. Um, for sure. Um, I think um, maybe it, I, I think it's a valid point for sure. Like, okay, this we pay for this analysis. What's the? Um, I think we should have some clear path to some <clears throat> definable outcomes as opposed to just, hey, this is signaling. So maybe it makes sense, um, Fabian, uh, if we huddle uh, just Christian and ourselves and kind of talk at a high level on on um, maybe two or three like tangible kind of outcomes from this and then and then go from there. 
Um, I'm not sure if. Yeah, I'm just not sure we need to spend 25K, but um, we, we can discuss. Um, I, I know you guys have a law firm and you, you need to make uh, you know money out of your work, but like, um, yeah, I, I think it should be something broader as that just 754. I think it should be something that can, we can apply on every pool, meaning that we need to definitely review subscription agreements and try to find like a, a, a way to answer like a creditor pool um, representation where your firm or one firm can be, you know, um, a name as a, you know, as a representative of, of uh, the senior trenches. But yeah, I, I think it's more, I, I think 754 is a very good example to, and um, a good way to kick this in because I think it's very needed. Uh, but I think it's like the, the, the biggest issue is not uh, bling pool, which is busy winning down. I think the biggest issue is like, the documentation and the, the contract right now doesn't allow um, and is not prepared to uh, deal with these situations. And I think it needs to be remade um, to that. So uh, again, happy to uh, connect with you on chain, or on sh off chain, whatever you want, um, and and um, and try to work on the, and answer your question if you have some, but also creating something a little bit bigger that could be answered in every contract uh, for future issues. Makes sense. Thank you for yeah. That will be the last word for today. And thank you for coming and giving your input as well here. So as the last thing, I just want to say this. I always forget this, that you can go over to Discord and claim your monthly PO app for this call. So Ivan uh, posted the code in the chat. You can post it once again. Yeah, it was just closed again. So you can head over to Discord and claim your PO app as a proof as you are here, a governance call number 16. So that's it for today. So thank you everyone for tuning in again. Looking forward to see you next month. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Great, great call. Bye. Great work. Thanks.